Life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. You get stronger and more resilient. You see, the reason as to why I'm up here, you guys, first off, I got the privilege to understand what the word resilience actually meant, because to be completely honest with you, when I got asked to come up here and speak to you guys about resilience and determination, I was like, what the heck does resilience mean? But I looked it up on Google, so it's all good. But <laughs> the second thing, you guys, is that I've also realized, I've got, gotten the privilege to realize that I've become a lot stronger and a lot more resilient. And let me tell you why that's important. I, I believe that in any path to success, you're, oh, <clears throat> wow, sorry, I'm growing up. You're always, you're always going to face struggle. You will always face struggle. And let me tell you why. When you face struggle, it humbles you enough to the point where you can actually deserve success. So you will always face struggle. Now, in my opinion, you will go into this business in one of two ways. You will either see extremely quick success, but eventually you'll get complacent and stop doing the things that got you there. So you let, good, you let being good get in the way of being great. And then you'll start to struggle. I know a lot of people have been going through that. And that's the best time for you to humble yourself and start learning again so that you can once again deserve success. Or you can go into this and struggle for a very long time. It might be three months, six months, a year, but you will struggle. But if you're, pa if you're patient, eventually, if you keep consistency in your work ethic, you guys, you will reach success. The same way that Nick Patak did. But regardless, you will face struggle. That's why persistence and resilience is so important. Now, when I first got introduced to Vima, you guys, I'm going to be completely honest. You guys have already heard the story where, you know, I used to work at a hotel where I got fired for going to the restroom at the wrong time. Um, and I actually used to work at a Crown Plaza hotel, which is ironic because that's where I'm residing right now. But basically for us, you guys. <laughs> for me, what I started realizing as I was going along was the fact that this idea of job security is completely obsolete. You see, my father and I were on the same page about that, so we decided to create a business called Patio Cure. He created the name, I didn't, I swear. Basically what it was, you guys, it was just building retaining walls and pa building paper patios, and it was very, very hard. It was very, very hard work, and it was very difficult to my body. Imagine a 19-year-old kid, it was difficult to my body. Imagine how difficult it must have been for a 50-year-old man. I actually remember this one day where it was very, very hot outside, and I remember my dad, he actually clenched his chest and immediately I flashed back to the fact that he had actually had, not, had, a, he had, he had a heart attack, you know, before. And I got scared. I didn't know what to do and I felt helpless. That was by far one of the scariest moments I've ever been with in the presence of my father. And that led me to make a very, very difficult decision that night. I had to go up to him and tell him that I, was, I, had, I had to quit patio cure in order for me to actually pursue my VEMA career so he would never have to do that again. At the time, my father did not believe in Vima, so obviously he responded the same way that a typical father would in that situation, which obviously he didn't want to talk to me. As a matter of fact, we didn't talk for over eight months, and he didn't even want me around the house. At that point, I faced a crisis, and I know that every single one of you guys will face a crisis or already has faced a crisis in their entire lifetime. So my first point is that you have to do three things in order for you to basically get through that crisis. You must improvise, overcome, and adapt. Obviously, I didn't, have a, you know, I didn't have a home, so what I had to do is I, got, I had to get on a phone call with the people that believed in me, people like Kyle Lipton and Clayton Ruff, just so that I could have a roof over my head. At that time, I was struggling financially. I would literally go off of 12 to 15 bucks a, a week li living off the Taco Bell diet. But I had to overcome that. You see, one of my biggest fears has actually been public speaking. I used to be scared ridiculously amounts just to speak in front of 35 people and now I'm speaking in front of 3,500 so obviously I overcame something. You must always overcome. Understand you guys that you know whether it's public speaking or talking to someone new or talking to your friends about this business you have to overcome that and you have to get very comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's what's going to allow you to adapt and it'll become part of your routine and you'll be able to do it like it's nothing. Now Obviously, when you face struggle, you guys, it's very easy for you to get scared. It's very easy for you to have doubts, and it's very easy for you to have a lot of fear. My second point, you guys, is that you have to build this business out of faith and not fear. You must always do that. When, when I first started in this business in Ohio, you guys, we had no one making money. There was no credibility here, no cars, no nothing. We always had to Skype in people in. But obviously, you guys, we had faith. 
And that was the one thing that got VTF, shout outs to VTF, that got us to where we are right now. We had faith. We believed that it could actually happen. Now, obviously, you guys have already heard my story. And yeah, I've, I've, I've gone through some pretty difficult times, but I've met people in my lifetime that have gone through even worse times. One of them actually pops into my head, a kid that I met about three years ago, a 10-year-old child from, from Honduras. You see, this kid decided to get on top of a freight train and literally travel on top of a freight train to come to the U.S. for days just so that he could get a job to pay for his family, to help his family out. He was 10 years old. He knew that there was a possibility of rape, kidnap, and murder. But throughout that entire journey, he never said to himself, oh, hopefully this doesn't happen, or what if this happens, or what if this, no. He was always saying, I will make it there, and I will help, help my family, and he made it here. Because he, he basically went with faith. That's the same thing that happens with your business. You can never let the what ifs, let the possibilities get in the way of you actually accomplishing what you believe in. Always, always build out of faith. Now, the third point that I want to make you guys is you have to understand that you have to love what you do. You have to love sharing this opportunity with people and you have to love doing Vima. You see the issue, and this is something that I actually got from uh, Steve Jobs, he said, if you don't love what you do, you'll quit. No rational person would ever go through a struggle if they don't love what they do. That's why most people quit their jobs, right? They hate someone telling them what to do, one o'clock in, one o'clock out, so they quit. So you need to learn how to fall in love with Vima, you guys. The issue is that most people, when they first get into Vima, they go into it thinking, oh, I got to get my friend because I got a double frenzy so I can make my money back. So you think of it as a money game, and instantly it becomes you hunting for your friends. And the, and the fun part of it completely gets thrown out the window. Remember that the reason as to why we do this is to build friendships. We do this to connect with people. We do this to better ourselves. We do this to empower people so that just by your presence, they literally become a better person. And that's the fun aspect about it. Never take the fun aspect out of the picture, you guys. Obviously, a lot of people might have, you know, struggles in the way, or they might be going through a crisis, but you can never focus on that. Always look at that setback as an opportunity for you, come, for you to come back way bigger and way stronger than what you were before. It doesn't matter if you've been in this business for a week, three months, over a year, you can always, always reach success, and you can even achieve more than what you have ever imagined. For me... I'm the kid that was born and raised in the dirt roads of Guatemala. I'm the kid that came here about nine years ago and had to see my parents struggle day in and day out. I'm the kid that had to see my, my dad come home literally with his feet hurting from shoveling driveways and we had to carry him in the, into the hot tub. I was the kid that decided about 15 months ago that that was no longer going to happen. I say this from a very humbling perspective. Now I'm the kid standing in front of 3,500 people sharing my story in the same stage that Darren Hardy's speaking on, and I am no different than you. Thank you very much. Yeah.